Hey guys, uh, welcome to System Design Fight Club. Uh, this is being recorded live on Sunday. Usually we do these live on Saturday nights, but I was unfortunately traveling last night. Uh, these are hosted at the link in the Discord channel that you can find in the about section of my YouTube channel. Um, it's live typically every Saturday at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and 10.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, today's problem will be YouTube, uh, the YouTube system design. It's actually a pretty standard problem. I think there's material in grokking for it. Alex Shu's first book also covers it. Um, and I think uh, Jordan Has No Life's YouTube channel also has some co content on it. It's a, it's a pretty common problem. Um, I'm gonna give it another minute or two and then we can go ahead and get started on this. Okay, we can go ahead and get started now. Uh, the numbers for this were a little bit more interesting. Uh, I'm going to see how far we can get with the uh, back of the envelope estimations. I think they are going to be really interesting for this one. Um, okay, let's start with the functional requirements for this problem. Let's check there aren't any questions before we get started. Good, okay. Functional requirements, uh, you should be able to upload a video. You should be able to watch a video. Um, uh, we're probably not gonna have time for this. So uh, you should also be able to search for videos. Uh, we'll get to that if we have time. And then also uh, view counts slash analytics or videos. Those aren't, that's not really a key feature. That's kind of why I'm putting in parentheses. We'll just kind of get to it if we have time. It's not really what we want to focus on. Uh, Non-functional requirements. Uh, we want high availability. We are definitely, um, eventual consistency is definitely good enough here. So uh, high availability, not high consistency for the system. Um, uh, what was the other one? Oh, lower latency. Uh, low latency is uh, pretty important. Kind of want the YouTube videos to kind of load uh, fast. Um, that's for video 
viewing. We want that to be relatively low latency, uh, as 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 low latency as uh, uh, financially reasonable. Um, okay, uh, numbers, back to envelope numbers. These are tricky. Um, so I've seen there's there's different numbers on grokking and in Alex shoes. Uh, it seems like a popular number is about 800 million daily active users, uh, five video views per day on average for the users. And um, it's a one to 200 ratio of view to upload. Uh, and then um, I was kind of hunting for some numbers on how many videos we're going to have in existence, what our storage requirements are. Uh, we can maybe just look at uh, the number of uploads that would be in existence for one year of uploading or something like that. Uh, what questions do we have? What do you mean by eventual consistency here? Um, it means that you're not going to, uh, you're, you're going to upload the video and then a few hours later, you're going to be able to view it. So it's eventual consistency in terms of upload versus viewing videos. Um, are you going to have stale data for some time? So it's, it's stale in that you're, after you upload the video, it's not going to like immediately start showing up. Um, that's what I primarily mean is that we are we were prioritizing uh, availability as opposed to consistency. So we're really prioritizing um, having it uh, showing up to the users rather than um, consistency of like an atomic. Like as soon as it's up, your users are going to be viewing it. It's it's the the uploading video part that's not going to be strong consistency here. Uh, good question, and it's uh, usually uh, um, low consistency and eventual consistency does mean uh, stale read. So your 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 use of the term stale data is very accurate on that. Um, it's right if the upload video is not listed right away. Yes. Yep. Okay. Cool. All right. Um, these numbers are definitely going to be tricky. Oh yeah, it's uh three hundred megabytes on average per video yeah okay uh how many uh views per second um how many people are trying to like load up a video at a given time um there's 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 a um bandwidth of downloading videos versus um there's a concept of the the bandwidth of how much data you're pulling down. That's that's definitely going to be a huge constraint here. Um, and we also want to see um, how many, how much storage, how much video storage do we need. Uh, we're also going to want to look at uh, how much um, upload volume. It's another thing. Okay, so uh, how many views per second? Um, I'm going to put all of these like that. So this is like the um, MD notation for um, making something bold. Actually, is there even a syntax for MD markdown? Yes, there is. So that's like markdown notation. Uh, what if I do like Okay, you know, I'm not going to get distracted with this. I also like to use obsidian.md for personal notes, and then it makes it like actually look bold. Maybe I'll switch to something like that in the future. Okay, how many views per second? Uh, we have 800 million DAU. DAU times five videos per day, and that's going to yield us video views per day. That gets us eight times five is 40. So that is going to come out to um, 4 billion views per day. Uh, and then we're going to divide by 100K um, and that will get us uh, the uh, views per second. There's 100,000 seconds in a day. Um, so that uh, comes out to, um, Okay, uh, 4,000 million divided by 
zero point one million, which is um, forty thousand million, forty thousand. Okay, four billion divided by one hundred thousand times ten gets us to one million. So it's four thousand times ten. Forty thousand. That's the number of views per second. Forty thousand views per second. That's an attempt to view a video. That's like, so that's going to kick off a download. So actually we can even kind of calculate bandwidth off of that. Um, um, so how much bandwidth do we need? Um, so it, they're, they're might, they might not necessarily view an entire video at once. Um, let's say that uh, nobody else gave a number for this, but let's say that there's an average of 25% uh, video watch rate, how, how much people watch a video on average. So it, uh, let's say it averages out to that. And so then we're gonna have um, 40,000 times uh, 0.25 times 300, megabytes, so that is 40,000 times um, quarter of 300, 150, that's 75 megabytes. Uh, okay, and uh, actually we're gonna multiply it by four again. Um, so that will come out to, because of the four at the start, so then it'll be like saying 10,000 times 300 megabytes. So then that equals um, 10,000, 100,000, 1 million times three. So then that is uh, three, 000, 3 million megabytes. I think, yeah. So 30,000, 300,000, 3 million. Okay. And then that equals three thousand uh gigabytes or three shoot i actually don't remember what the what the uh data is for this is it petabyte i think it's a uh, no terabyte it's uh three terabytes per second we need three terabytes down per second that's a lot that's a that's a pretty big amount okay what is in the chat can you people increase? Oh yeah, the font size. That is a, thank you so much for calling that out. I forget it every single week for at least one of the sessions. Thanks a ton, great call out. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right, we need three terabytes down per second. So you can only get like one gigabit down, I think one, one gigabit or one gigabyte down maybe in a data center. So now it's gonna be like three thousand machines of down. So you're gonna you're gonna need some caching here, a CDN for some popular videos. Uh, how much video storage? Um, so we have uh, a one. So how much upload volume? Um, yeah. So let's say let's have a goal of um, uploads. Uh, per day, uploads per day. That's what we'll have. Um, and we have 8,800 million daily active users times five. We had 4 billion views per day. And then we have a one to 200 ratio, right? One to 200 ratio of uploads versus uh, views of load to view ratio. And so then we're going to divide 4 billion divided by 200 equals uploads per day. Um, okay, so that's equivalent to 4,000 million divided by 200. Um, or four, so 2,000 divided by 100 is 2,220, 20 million uploads per day. Okay, 20 million uploads per day. Um, how much upload volume? 
much upload volume. Okay, uh, so 20 million per day, we have that. And I want per year, and I also want, so per year will bring us to video storage. And then also per day is, what's our, what's our uh, upload amount that we need? Um, okay. Um, we had the number of views per second. We can also divide that by 200 to come up with something. Um, or we can just do, um, okay, 20 million per day. Uh, let's, let's, let's find uh, how much per day first, and then also how much upload per second is another interesting number because we're going to have to capture it in the storage. We're going to have the primary store that we're going to capture it. This one is, is um, no, it was um, how much bandwidth we need for down. That's for caching. That's for, for caching. And so this one is upload volume versus the, the download volume. So this one's more about like the, uh, the buckets. You're going to, you're probably going to need some S3 buckets here. How much upload per second? So per day, uh, 20 million uh, times the size is 300 megabytes per video. Volume per day. So uh, 60 million times 100, 600 million, 6 billion, 6 billion megabytes. 6 million, yeah, 6 million, 6 billion megabytes per day up equals 6 million gigabytes uh, equals 6. Six hundred six thousand uh six thousand terabytes. Okay, I think this one might have been petabytes. So it's like six petabytes, I think, per day. Oh. Okay. So we have six petabytes oh. per day. How much upload per second? Uh we're gonna divide um this thing by 100,000. Okay. Uh, 6 billion divided by 100K is the upload per second. So we have um, 6,000 6,000 million megabytes divided by 100K. Um, okay, equals divided by 100, 6,660 million megabytes divided by 1K. Um, so 1K, you just knocked that one down by 1,000. We have 60K megabytes per second. Yes, 60, oh, another unit conversion. So we have 60 gigabytes per second. So you're gonna need at least 60 machines for handling that if, if the best you can get on a single ethernet cable is a gigabyte per second. And I think that's realistic. It's either for, for uh, um, residential internet, I think you can get like a gigabit or a gigabyte. I forget which one. We'll assume the bigger one, and then um, you can easily get that in a data center, I'd imagine. So I, I bet you could probably get a whole gigabyte per second in a data center pretty easily. Um, I don't know how fast you can actually get it in a data center, but I feel like that's kind of reasonable. I should probably check that. Um, how much video storage? Um, how much do we need for one whole year of video uploading? And then we're probably going to multiply that by at least 10, maybe uh, 20. Yeah, if we multiply that by, by 20, there's no way YouTube's had the same volume for the, the 20 or so years that it's been in existence. So that would be a, a nice upper bound is, um, so then multiply it. So then multiply that by 20 for a nice upper bound of all of YouTube's total videos. 
Okay, how much do we need for a whole year? We had uh, the amount per per day. Um, spin. This was how much upload volume is um day. So six petabytes per day. Um, one whole year. Uh, so we'll take that times uh three hundred and sixty five. Let's round it to three hundred and thirty. Three, that'll play nice with the six at the start. Okay, so then we have um, uh, two petabytes times uh, three times 333 is two petabytes times 1,000. So then that equals 2,000 petabytes per. Um, per year. I don't even know how, how big that is. I feel like it's probably, it was not, I think there's probably something between terabyte and petabyte. I would hope so. Um, and then we're gonna multiply it by 20 for the next step. So this is like a really massive amount of um, data. This is, a, this is an interesting number we got here. 40,000 petabytes in total as, as an upper bound for 20 years of video content. Yeah, okay, um, interesting. Let's try and dive into the actual diagrams. Any, any okay, 1,000 petabytes is an exabyte time. Thank you a ton for looking that up. Um, so that is um, two exabytes of data per year. And then uh, equals 40 exabytes of data in total as an upper bound for 20 years. Okay, any questions before we try and move into the uh, system design diagrams? Okay, let's go ahead and move on. Um, okay, we're gonna have two browsers. One is gonna be for the uploader. One is gonna be for the viewer. Um, yeah. Browse, browse, browser for uploader, browser. Viewer, you're probably going to want to cache. Couldn't find a lot of good content on figuring out just how much to justify on that. Uh, and then we're going to have the back end for video capture. Uh, it's the, the video capture service. All right, so you're going to send your thing in, it's going to be a, a video and you're going to have your user ID. And then uh, it's it's going to be captured in an object store. You are going to use uh, a thing called pre-signed URLs for this. Um, oops. So you're going to use pre-signed URLs. This is an S3 bucket. And then you're also going to want to have another database for the uh, metadata store. Okay, so you send the request in, it returns a pre-signed URL. So you roughly say, hey, I have a video. This is um, not our usual request and response contracts, of course. And then you're going to use that pre-signed URL and you're going to make a call. It's going to tell you, hey, here's this URL you're going to upload to directly on the bucket. You do what's called a multi-part upload. So you're going to upload a whole bunch of chunks. Um, and then you are going to do an ACK. When you're done uploading all the videos, you then 
give um, an ACK and you have um, ACK, which is roughly equal to, hey, I'm done. That's roughly what that is. Okay, and you're gonna have metadata on the video over here. So there's the metadata store. Uh, we should have a schema on that. So you'll have um, the uh, URL. There's the um, you upload URL. You're also gonna to wanna to transcode these videos to a bunch of different uh, formats of the videos. Um, like 720p and all that. Um, so there's the upload URL, you will have the title, uh, video title. Um, you will have, um, probably will have a reference to the uploader ID. Okay, and then we're gonna have a broker and we're gonna have some transcoders. Um, we will want to have some transcoders to translate it to a bunch of different formats down the road. Uh, so we will have some transcoders. And you're not going to stick the whole video on the message queue, of course. You will have a video ID. You don't want to use a URL to the video or the whole title. You will want to have a video ID. Um, so this is just like a user ID. So like one, two, three, four for the, uh, it'll, it'll just be their ID, not their whole username. Um, and then you have the video ID, which is also going to be some kind of other unique identifier thing. This will be a video like, um, uh, it's like, Byte Byte goes, um, how Bloom filters work? And this will be HTTP slash slash um, some weird URL dot S3 dot AWS uh, dot com slash um, some uh, other identifier info. Um, and there might be some kind of, okay, so uh, the pre-sign URL, there might be some extra stuff on it for the bucket. Um, this is going to be a really interesting call pattern. Uh, so first, hey, I will have a video I want to upload. Um, we are somehow going to get a pre-sign URL. I think we should also record it on the metadata store at that point of where this thing's going to be uploaded. You give it back to them as to, uh, uh, okay, so here's your URL, start uploading. Oh, you should maybe have a status on here. It's like a upload status. So it would be like um, pending. And then after they send the ACK, you'll update it to say uh, completed. And then after they send that ACK, that is when you then put a message onto the message queue. Uh, we should probably have a little text going of our process here. One uh, request uh, to do an upload, to persist the upload URL, three return a pre signed. Uh, URL uh, to the user for um, user performs multi-part upload. Five, when they're done doing their upload, um, uh, send user sends Act to backend server when they have finished multi part upload. And then we have six place a message, backend places message upon, says message on. 
the broker. And uh, how many things are we gonna be putting on here at a time? Is this gonna be SQS or is it going to be Kafka? So uh, how many, how much upload volume? So we have um, uploads per day. We are performing 20 million uploads per day. Uh, did we have how many per second? Uh, 40,000 views divided by 200 and get the uploads per second. So that was 200 uploads per second. Yeah. 20, 20 million divided by 100,000. Yeah, that's 200 there. Okay, it's consistent. I was just kind of checking that out. I was consistent with the number over here and I didn't screw it up, mix it with the view rate. Okay, uh, 200 TPS is getting placed upon the queue. Uh, and you're just gonna put an ID on it. You're just gonna put the video ID on there. Uh, that's all for the message. So we'll have the message schema. Yeah, that's it for it. And 200 TPS. So then we are probably going to want to go with Kafka. Um, that's probably a good idea. Kafka or Kinesis. Um, you might be able to get away with RabbitMQ or a message broker. Um, but if you ever get, uh, if it ever has the transcoders go down for whatever reason, um, for like an hour, then you're going to get um, 200 times 60 times 60, 360 um times 200 720 times 100 that is 72,000 messages in the backlog maybe that's not a crazy amount you can probably get away with rabbit mq but i don't know I, I i like to reserve uh message queues for when it's like i don't know thousands per day as opposed to hundreds of thousands or anything like that um so yeah kafka or kinesis is what i'd prefer Okay, and then you're gonna have these transcoders. Um, you're only putting the ID on the uh, message broker, and then we will need to talk back to this from the transcoders. So when you pull, you're going to pull a message off of there, and then you are going to fetch a video off of S3, it's a request to S3 and then you pull it down. So it's it's not actually S3 calling this, this is the, the data flow indicated with that arrow. So you're gonna do that. And then we're gonna have the translated, uh, the transcoded videos. So uh, S3 bucket of transcoded videos. And this one is of raw videos. The original format. Okay, so you pull it in from here to the transcoder and then you transcode it to this. Um, I think you can do pub sub of, so let's say that there is, um, there's the, the 720 key pipeline. Um, you can also have the HD pipeline. And so you can have this transcoder and we're gonna duplicate it. We're also going to have this one and that is going to be PubSub. So different pipeline for every format. Um, and then you're gonna have another one here. And then, um, so there you got your transcoded videos. Um, you could have the URLs for the transcoded locations. So you could have the um, 720p URL, have the HD URL. Um, okay, so that would mean that you are doing, uh, so you have the transcoder first, write it there, and then you persist the, um, the uh, URL to the metadata store when you're done. Um, so then that's how you're gonna get the URL into there. 
So we're going to have that dash 720t, that dash t. There we go. That's our metadata store. Um, you might want to do cache, uh, CDN. Um, so we are actually going to move our viewer's browser way over to the other end. I think it would be easier to fit it into the diagram over on this side. Um, how are you going to decide what goes in the cache? So, something's definitely going to have to go into a CDN. We are definitely going to have some kind of um, CDN store as well. So uh, this would be um, a CDN of um, popular uh, 720p slash HD videos. So I think you should just have some kind of batch job nightly batch that just kind of looks at uh, this metadata store. I need to talk about what kind of data store we're going to use there too. Um, I'll get to that. Um, that, that will be a fun thing to calculate is, is the, the kind of data store to use here and um, how many nodes you're going to need on it. Um, so there's going to be a CDN. It's probably You probably want to watch. Um, you're going to have some kind of DB or data store of view analytics, data store of view video analytics. And then we will have a nightly batch job of some lambda functions or something, and they will do um, they will do a check against this thing of what are the most popular videos, and then um, it will pull in the videos from the transcoded uh, S three buckets, and then it will push it over to here. Um, should you have a TTL? on the CDN, um, possibly, but then uh, I, don't, I don't know if you should have a CDN on there. Um, you might wanna just manually delete it. You would just know what the top videos are. You should then compare it with what you, you should maybe have a database of what is in the CDN. You don't wanna be moving these huge videos back and forth a whole lot to determine what's in it. You could keep track of what you do have in the CDN and its own data store, and then you would push it to the CDN. Um, we can deep dive this later, but I don't think you should just have the CDN just directly push to it unless it's maybe a popular YouTuber or something. So this would, you, you could have another transcoder pipeline just like this that pushes just straight to a CDN or something, or it could be a last step. Oh, oh you, would, you wouldn't transcode it for the CDN. You would actually have the transcoded videos. And so then, if you were gonna push everything to the CD and that would actually be a last step on the transcoders. I don't think you wanna push literally everything to the CDN though. So the CDN is just gonna to, going to kind of have content in its own special way. Um, let's talk about the browser view scenario though. Is um, So first there's gonna be um, the CDN of the stat static assets. Um, I usually would draw the CDN as cloud, but it, it's a data store. I'm just gonna draw as a box this time. So it's gonna be the CDN of static, of static assets of HTML slash JS for loading the web pages. Okay. Uh, the very first thing you actually do is talk to a DNS, actually. Um, I usually don't go into this level of detail on the viewer side. Um, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to get the IP address of google.com, um, and then you are going to pull the assets from the CDN. And then after the web page is loaded and you've got that, you can start to show some videos on the page. So let's say you're going directly to a video, uh, directly to a video view page, DNS, you've got the IP address, pull down the rest of the HTML, JS assets, and then you want the video itself. So then first you're gonna check the CDN. If it's not in the CDN, you can check the S3 bucket of the proper format that you're looking at. Um, so if it's HD, you'll go ahead and do that. If you're on a poor connection, you can't do HD, it'll be 720p, you can manually select it, but I think it's also done automatically by default um, for whatever your connection is. Um, so we'll figure it out, but you can also manually set it to HD if you just particularly want a video in HD. 
Um, I need to talk about what technology you use here. Any questions before I keep going though? Okay, I don't see any questions in the chat. I'm gonna keep going. Um, so I already talked about the data store for these, of course, the, the actual object stores, S3 buckets. If you're using Google GFS, I think it's probably what you use there. Um, these are just like Lambda functions, although I think there's a built-in AWS account, uh, a built-in AWS co component specifically for transcoding. I, I don't think anyone would expect you to know about that. The metadata store, um, let's, let's look at the hits on that. Let's look at the hits on the metadata store. Um, so uh, write TPS, read TPS of the metadata store. Maybe we even want to do some caching if it's getting hit just that much. So 40,000 views per second. So um, 40 thousand for the read TPS and then it's a one to 200 ratio so it's going to be read heavy and um, it'll be um, 200 TPS for the writes 40,000 for the read so it is read heavy uh, you probably want to use um, Dynamo DB I would say Dynamo TB yeah they were using or oh 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 you could use postgresql with um a bunch of read replicas you could do uh postgresql with just a, an absolute ton of read replicas i i saw that some video some people were using postgresql for their metadata store um and i mean the read replicas work just fine and that would allow you to have stronger consistency. I don't really know why you would want to have stronger consistency on the metadata store, unless you were also counting the, doing the view counts in there. Um, but um, that would be messy, I think, for, for trying to handle in there. So I would maybe use DynamoDB, and then we need to talk about partition key. So, um, uh, Um, I'm going to say DynamoDB. And then um, what's the partition key going to be? How are we going to do this? Um, so we are going to have the celebrity issue. We, we will have the celebrity issue. Um, is there, so for searches, well, so if you're doing searches for videos, you would actually want Elasticsearch for, you're going to search by video title, most likely, or a tag. There's tagging in YouTube videos. So you're gonna want more like Elasticsearch there um, instead actually. Otherwise, um, if you're going directly to videos, which is also a common scenario, we'll, we'll focus on the direct linking to videos case. You would get, um, um, so there's, there's two different read scenarios. Is um, you have search, and then there's um, direct link and view, uh, which is where you have something like uh, u2.be slash um, def abc, some kind of hash code or number. And um, I guess that would maybe be the video ID instead is, um, we'll call it video hash, which is uh, def, ABC, and that's what they have in those little short links on YouTube. And that's what you usually do. So we're gonna focus on just that use case for the partitioning key here. And then I think if you wanna talk about search, you would maybe actually just have a secondary data store and you would somehow have it flowing out to Elasticsearch um, for that. So if you're gonna talk about search, we're gonna have um, Elasticsearch of metadata for a search scenario. And this, it's of course gonna be a, a little bit more complicated. I, I don't like to use DB triggers for replicating data because that's flaky. Um, so I'd actually prefer to do it a little bit different where you'd actually have it coming off from further upstream somehow possibly, or you could have it at the end of the pipeline as you would copy it from the metadata store to here um, would possibly be good. Um, but anyways, for this scenario, partitioning key, you could probably just do consistent hashing 
I would use this as the partitioning key. And it's consistent hashing. And then you would have a sort key of um, either of these. So you could have, um, this is the sort key. And then you would have, um, you could even make this also a secondary sort key for the lookup. Um, it's the partitioning key. And I don't think they, def by default, will also use the partitioning key for sorting it with anything. Uh, you just use the partitioning key exclusively for figuring out the partition that you put it on. Um, how many nodes are we going to want here? If you did go with uh, PostgreSQL instead of DynamoDB, um, you would maybe want to have uh, 40. You'd probably want to have uh, about 40. If you had a peak of twice, uh, so there's like daily peaks in your volume, it looks like a sinusoidal curve. It of course be globally distributed again. And so then it would always be peak day at a different area of the world. But um, within each one, you're gonna have a certain number of nodes and you're probably gonna wanna scale it up to twice what this number is. So you're probably actually gonna wanna have 80 machines around the world. Um, so uh, if Postgres UL 80 nodes um, globally distributed, and then um, DynamoDB just kind of you, you, you partition out some write volume, um, but under the hood, you know, it's probably gonna be like 80 nodes. Um, yeah, I think that would work well. Okay. Um, volume, what's, what's the upload volume? Uh, so let's, let's say we just rolled our own HDFS. So usually it's S3 buckets. So then, um, what if we used HDFS here? We'd have to manually come up with the machine count. Um, and that's going to be bound by um, our bandwidth. It's going to be bandwidth bound. Um, so we're going to have, uh, there's, there's tricks where you can have multiple hard disks to a machine, to a, to a single um, CPU core. Um, this one's definitely going to be bandwidth bound, and then it's going to have just a massive each uh, hard disk space per node. Um, let's let's figure out how much storage space we would need per node after we figure out what the bandwidth bound is going to be. Um, so upload per second is sixty gigabits per second. Sixty gigabits per second. Um, one gigabyte. Uh, let's say one gigabyte per machine. And so that would be 60 machines for handling bandwidth. How much stored per machine then? And we could say it's going to be somewhere between um, two exabytes stored total and 40 exabytes stored total. So it's um, two exabytes to 40 exabytes in total. Um, and it's not gonna be frequent access of this. It's gonna be these that are handling the frequent access of, um, of the download rate. Um, let's try dividing two exabytes, which would be two Bytes to um, how many gig? How many terabytes? So that would be two two thousand terabytes. Would there be any hot partition in the DB? Oh, like for the S three buckets? Um, for the S three buckets, I mean, you should also do something like consistent hashing and try and like evenly distribute it somehow. Um, so you would not have, you, you don't want to do any partitioning by uploader ID. You do not want to do any partitioning by uploader ID. That would be a good secondary key in the me metadata store, by the way, is the uploader ID. Um, uh, but you want to do consistent hashing here, I'd say. Um, and then, um, that would maybe be interesting for when you're loading up somebody's YouTube page, you might want to, okay, you might also want to have timestamp 
because you're usually sorting them within a page of somebody's YouTube channel by uh, date upload, or you're going to do it by view count, which would then be off of a different data store we had at the top for analytics. Um, so that's an interesting problem. I, I usually when, when interviewers bring up this problem, it's it's mainly they want to deep dive the uh, upload bandwidth numbers instead of like the search scenarios. But um, it definitely does have a very interesting hot partition issue or celebrity issue for YouTube videos. Um, and I think you would just kind of do consistent ashing to handle it. Um, but of course you might be able to do something like the hybrid approach that Twitter uses or something. Um, hot partitions though, yeah, they, I, I think those are an issue. Um, so let's say 2000 terabytes and we have um, 60 machines. Um, okay, so that is equal to 1,000 terabytes divided by 30 machines. Um, so divide that by three, 333 terabytes divided by 10 machines. That is 33.3 terabytes per machine. A little bit on the upper end of, I, I've, I've mainly only seen hard disks that handle about two terabytes to six terabytes, but of course you can mul uh, stick multiple to a machine. Um, if you've read about uh, Dremel or uh, BigQuery uh, from um, uh, Google's white papers on those, uh, they definitely do tricks where you have um, a lot of storage space to a single machine. And then they do um, column R storage um, but of course this is an object store. Um, I think, I think you would actually just go ahead and have a whole bunch of disks per machine and you would probably have it replicated actually. Um, yeah, multi -da multiple data center replication. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. How are you going to do AZ resiliency? Yeah, you should probably. Yeah, I did. I did. That's what I did. 2000. Oh, wait, 2,000 petabytes. You are right, 2,000 petabytes. So we actually have, we are still disk bound. I, I don't know if you can actually have 30 petabytes to a single machine. I've heard of this. It's, it's like they had this trick called a, um, um, a, a network attached hard disk or something. It's where you just have like, you basically have a whole bunch of disks just attached EBS, elastic, so, uh, oh, I, I think the elastic block store is usually something that you have to an EC2 instance. Uh, so it's either EBS or you want to look into um, Dremel slash BigQuery. I bet the GFS paper might even have something interesting for this. Um, GFS paper, probably. Network attached storage, that's what it is. Network attached storage. I think that is, uh, that is definitely a trick that you want to use here. Pro I, I think that GFS probably is going to mention something about network attached storage. We mentions, uh, and uh, that that's probably going to be the trick to do here, um, because this one's not going to have a lot of down volume. It's up, and then on the other machines, you're going to have a lot of down, uh, a lot of um, pull down off the machines. And uh, we're probably going to look at how much. This is it's probably going to be a smaller number here. You're going to have more machines over here on the downside. Let's let's go deep dive this. Let, let's go deep dive the downside. Um, the downside is um, how much. Uh, I, I also you only use two exabytes over here instead of the forty number, so it's even going to be bigger than that per machine. Is it, it would actually be closer to about six hundred petabytes per machine up. Of you have six hundred petabytes of storage per machine. If that's if that's what you're doing over here, is you're you're storing raw videos each one three hundred megabytes, all twenty years. 
um, is just over here, then it, it's literally going to be 600 petabytes per machine if you're doing your own HDFS. That, that doesn't even bring up the replication. <laughs> With replication, it's going to be insane. Uh, yeah, you're going to need you're, you're going to need a lot of hard disks over here. Um, let's let's transition over to the, the 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 download side. Is um, so how much download? How much download per day? How much bandwidth do we need for down? We need three terabytes per second. So um, we have forty thousand TPS for reads of videos. And we were gonna say that it is, it was what I came up with three terabytes per second down, three terabytes per second down, which is equal to 3,000 gigabytes. So at least 3,000 machines based on the bandwidth. Um, so that would be how many TPS per machine? Um, it's going to be about 10 to 20 TPS being handled each, and they're just going to be handling huge, huge requests, huge requests off each. It's um, You're going to do multiple requests to fetch down the video. So it's going to be multiple requests per each of those TPS that we're calling. A, a single TPS is a, a full video access. And we said that we're only accessing, uh, pulling down a quarter of a video on average. But um, yeah, um, anyways, how many TPS per machine? It's gonna be about 10 to 20 TPS, but each request is, but we are saying, we are saying that each request is a load of 0 0.25, or we'll, we'll say 25% of a video. And um, it's one gigabyte per machine. So how much storage? How much storage are we putting on each machine? So uh, we have three thousand machines, and we have um, two exabytes to forty exabytes. That is um, 2,000 terabytes to um, 40,000 terabytes. So uh, for 2,000, so we're going to have the 2,000 terabyte calculation and then the 40,000 terabyte calculation. So we have 2,000 terabytes. Um, so then 2,000 terabytes divided by 3,000 machines. So that comes out to less than one terabyte per machine. That's pretty comfortable. You can definitely do that. Um, and then it's one gigabyte per second down off the machine and it just has one terabyte of storage. Over here though, um, so two, 100 divided by, let's, let's convert it to 10. So we're gonna do two, times 10,000 terabytes divided by 3,000 machines is two times um, 10,000 divided by three is 333, 3, 333 um, divided by 1,000. And um, that is two times um, that five by 1,000. It's 3.333 terabytes. Um, so then we have 6.666 terabytes per machine. So, I mean, that's still stretching it a little bit, but it's not as unrealistic as having literally, you know, 600 petabytes per machine. So then we didn't we didn't even cover the what was it 40 exabyte scenario. It was uh yeah 40 exabytes is um comes out to around 600 petabytes per machine. Very unrealistic. 
um google had in the dremel paper they had something where it was like um it was it was definitely a disk bound scenario and it's for ad hoc analytics on massive data sets is what bigquery is and uh it it had a number somewhere where it was thrown out at that like at the volume of um the disk clusters the hard disk clusters that they had that you would have um thousands of hard disks that are made available to every uh bigquery user at a at a time so you're making big queries, making queries over big data sets that uh, it, it allows you to make queries over thousands of hard disks at a time. And so the columnar storage is, is, is optimized for doing less disk seeks and it just reads off strips of that disk at a time, really long stretches of it into RAM. And so it is, that's why I'm thinking that that Dremel might be good here. Um, how long are you really gonna need the raw storage since you're gonna encode it over here? Um, you wouldn't need something like Dremel over here since it's more like for, for it's, it's for direct browser viewing. Um, how much are you, of this are you really going to want to stick in the CDN though? Um, Alex, you had some numbers for how expensive that part is. Um, that would be interesting. I didn't have time to deep dive it a whole lot. Um, let's take a second to hear if you guys have any questions though over what I've covered so far. Uh, you, you guys have any questions about any of this? Okay, it is a smaller crowd for this session. Um, what else should I deep dive here? Um, could count this. So we were getting, um, what was it, 200 TPS against this machine? It was, uh, yeah, 200. So you just need like one machine on this. You would, you'd have it globally distributed too. So this would be like one machine each. I haven't covered the YouTube design review, so I am mostly understanding the numbers right now. I actually even watched a webinar on this. So that's why I'm at such an advantage right now is that um, I actually watched a free webinar about two weeks back offered by Scalar. So there's a ton of info out there on the YouTube problem. Uh, Grokin covers it. Alex, you covered it in his first book. Um, Jordan has no life, probably covered it. That's a YouTube channel. Um, there was, there was also the Dropbox problem. So Grokking also covered the Dropbox problem, which is probably gonna be really, really similar. And then um, there's the GFS white paper, which is also gonna be wonderful content for this. Uh, Dremel, I, I really feel like the Dremel paper might even be good. The GFS paper is probably even better though. It's probably actually gonna mention NAS. I think Dremel's probably using NAS. I gotta double check that. I was just trying to get into the white papers a little bit over this last week. Um, I have done the Instagram problem, which seems somewhat similar. I've done, I, I covered Instagram, I think a couple weeks back. It's the, the numbers aren't quite, quite as crazy for Instagram, I think, because it doesn't, I think it had fewer users. And then also for the pictures, they said they're like two, they are like two megabytes each. And then you're just not really, it's, it was just like two megabytes each. So it was like 100 times less storage, 100 times less storage just off of that size discrepancy. And then I think the user's number was also less crazy. Like we have 800 million active users for this, like a, a one seventh of the entire global population, almost maybe one ninth. Last I checked, it was like 7 billion people in the entire world. And, um, so Instagram definitely doesn't have that big of a user base. Um, so even on that, it was probably at least 10 times smaller. So overall it'd be like 1000 times less storage. And uh, so we had like 3000 machines here handling this volume of bandwidth. So we would come down to like three machines based off the two numbers I just pitched. Um, yeah, this one's interesting. I have no idea what to do about the CDN. So for, for Instagram, the CDN is a little bit more straightforward because there'd be a recency bias to the pictures. And so, and then there's also celebrities that you just identify. So I, I guess you would just kind of stick all the celebrity accounts into the CDN for starters. So like all the, the really, really big YouTube channels like Tom Scott's, I really like Tom Scott, um, just stuff like that. And um, you can also look for outliers of things that have a recency 
kind of thing off of, I keep pointing at the transcoders when, when I'm talking about the recency checking thing, it would actually be off of this. Um, I didn't dive into search yet. I'll, maybe I'll do that in the second video. Search and uh, video analytics. Maybe I'll do that in session two. Okay, any questions? I'm probably just gonna wrap it up here. I'll, I'll post all this in the channel afterwards and upload it to YouTube, of course. Um, right throughput is pretty high for YouTube too, right? It was, oh, the right volume. We talked about the right volume. How much upload volume per day? We had six petabytes up and we talked about per second is 60 gigabytes per second. Instagram was, was smaller. Instagram was, it was almost like a couple of gigs per second. It was, it felt like it was just a couple of gigs per second. It was like no more than 10 machines could handle the upload volume. And here it's like 60 probably. Um, and then the, the down, the read throughput is monstrous. Uh, that's storage. I pointed out storage. It was, it was the, the, the views down per, it was, yeah, it, it monstrous amount of storage and download volume for YouTube. All right, any questions? Can I wrap it up? All right, well, um, thanks for joining me, guys. If you can come up with any more questions after I close it out, feel free to post it in the Discord channel. I'll start a thread, of course, um, and I'll, I'll post the recording to YouTube and um, diagrams, of course, and the thing. Um, yeah, thanks for joining me, guys. I'll, I'll close it out. See you guys.